what you're looking like. Okay, the next episode, the next installment on this mudguard fabrication involves correcting the ellipse. At the moment, as you can see, it's too straight. This is probably from a 19 inch mudguard, I imagine looking at the origins of it, and that's a 17 inch wheel, so it's gonna have too straight a curve, and that's gotta be corrected for it to look right. It doesn't look wrong, I mean, if I get the shorter piece I do and pop it on there, it doesn't look wrong, it doesn't look terribly out of it, but it's enough to be noticed, and I don't like that, it's gotta be right. If you, if you press the back down to follow the tire for a bit, for say that much, front of it's kicking up half an inch already too much at least to follow down at least to follow it you know so the best way to do it like all these things easy showing this bit is to cut little slices in it along its edge both sides and then curve it round a little bit more and tack weld those slides up so that effectively you bring the curve in obviously you couldn't just bend it because the sides would just flap outwards being as it's a curve so it's got to be done a little bit but you've got to cheat really and butcher it cut little slots in it and then just weld them up and, and planish them over at the end the whole thing's going to get body work so it doesn't matter if it's got welds on it now there's another little trick to it something else you have to be careful of and i try and impart a little bit if i can if you're going to do any of this fabrication yourself what's really important when doing this is if you're going to cut these little slits in the side to then close up they have to be exactly the same place side to side because if you cut one slit out of kill it with the other on the other side when you shut that curve up it's going to twist it will actually follow the curve one will cut in there the other one will cut in down there so it will curve that way and it will just look wrong the whole thing when you're finished will end up twisted so it's pretty important to get where the cuts are in relation to the center line, absolutely 90 degrees across it. So that sort of thing also matters. Fabrication is not difficult. It's just a little bit of thinking and trial and error and you'll get it. And I hope that a few of you out there are thinking about or getting into a little bit of fabrication yourselves because it's enormous fun, very creative, and it sets your bike apart from all the others out there. Right, anyway, it's enough chat. Let's get these corrected. Make them look like they were actually made for the wheel. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back. Still not quite perfect, but it's good enough for what I've got in mind. It's gone from about half an inch run out at the end to about five mil. So seven, eight mil difference, that's pretty cool. And once I weld all those slits up, that's gonna drag in a little bit more yet. So let's tack the other one so we can make them the same.
Yeah, better. It's actually touching front and rear, so that's perfect. I actually got that one bang on. I'm thinking this one may be the front, I don't know, because I kind of think that round edge matches under there and so on, but the fact that that's perfect on that ellipse, absolutely perfect. And the other one, the pointy one, kind of runs away just a little bit. That's how it would do at the back, right down below, just to catch the rain and stuff. So maybe that's a happy accident. Oh, I love happy accidents. They keep on happening. Right, using the vise, I'm going to squash them back in just a little bit because they flared out just slightly, which is quite natural when you're pushing anything in. I didn't want to bring these slits up any higher than I had to because there's more to weld up. This way I can just squash them back in. And now all I've got to do is tack weld those back up and then make them look good. There we go, on the inside, a little row of tacks and just seam it nicely together on the outside that will that will finish back like new. Well, I think the decision as to which half of this goes which end has made itself really. It just looks right like that. That's the front half. It's the square one, the original one I made, because it fits in with this. Everything fits and it all looks correct. And also the pointy end at the back gives a kind of tail to the back of my guard. I kind of like that. Works quite well right down here. And as you can see now, putting the two halves together, the seam, the joint between them is just happy accident. It's just come out almost perfect. A little tiny grind on one side, just a little piece of material out of the way, and that will be almost an airtight joint. 
and just seam weld that right the way across. A little bit of strength on the inside, a couple of bits of sheet plug welded, just to keep that absolutely strong. And then that's one mudguard, I love it. Kind of Arlen Ness style -y. I like that, all the way down to the ground at the back. Absolutely love it, and down at the front here too. I wanna to keep this look down the front, I like that. Kind of picks up the front of the mudguard, must, you know, high booster, blackbird, that sort of thing. Definitely like the depth at the front. And then you might as well emulate that at the rear as well. Take it right the way down. Then that looks proportionally rotated to the right angle. I'm just looking in the picture beside the screen. So I think that now works. All I'm gonna need after this is some bracketry to hold it together. I'm thinking three mil. The stuff that I made the top of the benches from, I've still got loads of that, three millimeter thick. That stuff's gonna be awesome for this. I'm thinking of making a plate, cut it out of cardboard, a plate that's gonna bolt to there front and rear, possibly not even use these ones, bolt to there, come on the inside, and then literally, I'm thinking, seam weld it along this edge. So it actually comes up and is one piece, and the mudguard can then be blended in, and that will then pick it up with a lot of the other bodywork. So the mudguard will come around, and it will blend into its bracket. Thinking that sort of thing, perhaps some holes bored in it, big ones for looks, and take some of the weight out of it. Uh, as for weight, just another one, lots of you are saying all this metal body work, how much is this bike going to weigh? Took 25 kilos off this bike when I first stripped it down. That's all the fairing, the fairing frame underneath, all the tail end plastics, the original exhaust system, everything. 25 kilos, 55 pounds in weight gone, that's quite a lot. And at the moment, with what I've put on in its place uh, is the tail, and that's about five and a half kilos now. This thing's about one and a half kilos, whatever this way side, it's the belly pan. I still don't think I'm over 25, and if I am, I don't care, it doesn't really matter, but I certainly don't want to be that much over, that's for sure. Right, with this, like I said, just one more thing, seam weld that across and then get into the plates, then that's done. I love, got the curvature right now, that was really, really important with such a long mud guard. It's got to fit the wheel, although it looks a bit daft. And then that's it. One more thing, just quietly, just one more thing. These. A lot of people have been saying that these need to go now. This, as you refer to it, pipe lagging. It's not pipe lagging, it's radiator hose. It's a big, thick, solid rubber radiator hose slid over the forks. I did it to emulate the big custom bike alloy tubes that you see, you know, but I can't afford those. I could probably make some, but this was so easy. So cheap, did them right back at the beginning of the project and they've been on there ever since. But with a lino knife, I can slice them off Chuck them away, it's not the end of the world. Don't worry too much about that. I might remove them, I might not, not sure. I think when all this is done, they're gonna look a bit clumsy, like so many of you say, so I think they will have to go. Certainly not on the handlebars though. I love the fact that I put some on the handlebars to make them look inch and a half without having to then put new controls and new clamps and everything else. That's just a cheap option at the time. But there we go, this bike's evolving as it goes. I'll be redoing some of the stuff that I've done, possibly even revisiting the stuff on the top of the tank. Not sure if it looks a bit clumsy in the light of all the rest of it. So again, maybe modifying that. This project will be done when it's done. <laughs> Who knows? But there we are. It's gotta be right before I roll it out in the sunshine and call it finished and sign it off. I've gotta be happy with every single aspect of it and there's still little things that annoy me. So there we go. I'm gonna call it done for now. That's another one in the wall. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.